Rev up your engine! Charlie J says, hey, I hear you talk about cars made in the countries of the companies that make them, like German cars in Germany, Japanese cars in Japan. Well, I live in Canada. It's hard to find the Japanese-made Toyotas here. What do you think about the American and Canadian-made ones? Yes, I have to admit, I am in favor of that. I would rather have a Japanese vehicle made in Japan. I got a Celica that's made in Japan. My wife's got a Lexus that's made in Japan. But you might like this since you're in Canada. We also have a 2007 Toyota Matrix that was made in Cambridge, Ontario. It's one of the best cars we ever bought. So <laughs> kudos to you Canadians. The second car I ever had was a Ford Maverick and it was made in Oakville, Ontario. That was a great car. I drove the heck out of that thing. I paid 500 bucks for it. I drove it eight years and I sold it for $200. So for eight years, it cost me 350 bucks. Not a bad deal, it's a well-made car. Canadians do a good job making cars. So, hey, if you got a choice there, you can get a Toyota made in Canada, buy that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Snack size said, Suddenly, I want a Cadillac. I want an inexpensive car to travel coast to coast. Only needed to last a year. Came across an 01 Eldorado from a private party. Looked in great condition. I get it for five grand to three grand. What do you think? Pray that this sudden wish for a Cadillac will pass, like bad gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> they made them a little bit better back in 2001, yes. It's not a collector's item, so it's worth nothing. It's got 97,000, so it's 100,000 miles on it. If you can get it for three grand and you want, have a mechanic check it out first. Make sure it's a good vehicle. Absolutely, positively have them go through with it. And you said, well, you only want something to last for a year. Here's the thing. You can't say I only want something to last. Either it's well made, it's going to last a long time, or it's not. <laughs> I would not put a time frame on the thing. Ride Canix says the engine and transmission are in good shape, and the electronics are good. What the heck? If you can get it for three grand, go ahead. You say it's a 2001. It's got 97,000 miles. I want absolute, definite proof. That's the real mileage. Guys lie about mileage all the time. You want paperwork. You want yearly car inspection reports with the mileage on it. Places like Carfax, you can get that kind of information. They're not always great as the Carfax info, but if it's got the state inspection, it'll have the mileage each time, and it'll see if it's real or not. If it is, the mechanics is okay. Ah, you might want to, but if it was me, I'd wait till the feeling passed, and I'd look for a Toyota. Or an old Lexus. Big Steel says, Scotty, I got a 2011 Odyssey, 160,000 kilometers. When I go between 110 and 120 kilometers an hour, I get a vibration in the vehicle. You can feel it. Only in that range. Above and below is fine. Tire pressure and balance is good. Any idea what might cause it? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's a Honda Odyssey. They have perhaps the worst automatic transmission that Honda ever made in those things. That's the problem. Because at certain speeds and certain gears... They will vibrate like that. Have a pro check it out. And if he says that's what it is, do you want to spend four or $5,000 or more having another transmission or having that one completely overhauled? Or you want to get another vehicle and ditch that thing now? That's why I tell people not to buy Honda Odysseys. They had one of the worst automated transmissions Honda ever made. Notorious for having problems. And they act just like that. Here in the United States, I actually had a bunch of my customers get free ones from Honda. Now they're getting older. They're not doing it as much. I don't even know if they did it free in Canada or not. There's different laws. I got a friend in Hamilton, Ontario, when he said they don't hardly recall anything in Canada. They don't fix hardly anything for free. It's like, you buyer beware. It's yours. Too bad. If they do have any kind of a thing, go to a Honda deal and say, hey, the transmission's going out. Are you going to fix it for me for free? If they do, great. If not, I would really think about getting rid of the vehicle. Madman says, useless electronics. What does it mean when a tire pressure light stays on? I got a 2012 Lexus, 115,000 miles. I don't understand why it's law that they have these stupid systems. You can check the pressure yourself. Well, the reason it's law that you are like me, you're going to check the stuff with the gauge, right? But the average American doesn't. They're lazy. They don't do anything. And it's to save them from themselves. But of course, the problem is all those tire pressure monitoring systems, the modern ones, work. Each tire has a valve stem. Inside the valve stem, on the inside, not the outside, the battery built in. That allows it to broadcast the tire pressure to the computer to tell you what it is. Well, they're batteries. Guess what? Batteries only last so long. Then they wear out. In the case of yours, nine years old. 
batteries are going to wear out. To figure it out, you got to pay a guy like me as a scan tool to put it on or a fancy real TPMS machine like I have. You can walk around the car and it tells you which one's good and bad and to test it, then you got to replace them. But even in my case, I can't replace them because I don't have a tire machine. I don't do tires. So you got to go to a tire place. They got to take your tire apart. They got to put a new one in and sometimes they're a hundred something bucks a piece. Then they got to put your tire back on, balance it, and then reprogram the machine for it, which is going to cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So most most guys just say heck with it I'll check it with a pressure gauge that's the easiest thing to do cheapest thing to do but that's our modern society people are trying to save us from ourselves and in some cases it might not be a bad idea because a lot of people never check tire pressure of course when the tires get old they're not going to fix the machine either so then it's lost its purpose but it worked for a few years <laughs> Geraldine says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on an 08 Land Rover RL2 with 120,000 miles as a serpentine bell this year will cost 1700 bucks. Mechanic says it needs other work. What are your thoughts on this and the price range? Would you stay to buy? <laughs> I wouldn't give $100 for that car. <laughs> I work on them. I know what piles of junk they are with that kind of miles on it. And if it says 1700 bucks to fix the serpentine belt, that obviously means other things are broken. Whatever that belt drives, they're broken and it's going to need those parts. Those are endless money pits. Don't buy that car if you value your money. They are just endless piles of junk with 120,000 miles on it, especially a 2008. Now, if you went way back, you go 20, 30, 40 years ago, Land Rovers are relatively solid built vehicles. But then they became yuppie mobiles where they added all the stuff on it. And originally they had a four cylinder engine. A long time ago, they put V8 engines. The original V8 engines that went in them were Buick V8 engines. They just stuck American stuff in them. And now now, you know, they make their own. The quality control is... And now, owned by uh, Tata, the Indian company, and the Chinese own part of it. Chinese bought into a bunch of them. Don't buy it if you value your money, and don't ever buy a used one with 120,000 miles on it. They are endless money pits. Believe me, I had customers that are rich that got rid of them because they got sick of throwing so much money into them. One guy, what did he buy? He bought the Toyota version. Instead of the Land Rover, he bought a Land Cruiser, and he loves it. He's got like 200,000 miles. This thing still runs fine. He hadn't put any money at all into the thing. Motorcycle One, Seth Robinson says, I got a Honda CT90. The thing has no power at all. I put another carburetor on it. It still has no power. Somebody told me maybe the engine's worn out. It's a little bitty thing. Those engines don't last all that long. And it's gave the gear. The thing's really old, too. Simple thing is just take the spark plug out, do a compression test, wet and dry. I've got video on that. You do it, compression test, dry, then put like half a tablespoon of oil in it, then do it. And if it goes way up, that means the piston rings are worn out. Odds are that's the case. Now, you did say you put a new carburetor on it, right? But it could be that the fuel tank is clogged up. And I see that all the time in old motorcycles. So a trick is, first, take the fuel cap off and then rev it up. And if it revs then and doesn't when you put it on, it means the vent in the fuel cap shot. Get another fuel cap that's got a vent that's not clogged up. And also look inside with a flashlight. And if you see it's all rusted, you're going to have to take it off, clean it out, get all the rust out. Because rust will clog up a new carburetor. It could be you put a new carburetor on, and if there's rust in a gas tank, it's going to clog that carburetor up so fast, it's going to make it through that. So either the engine's went out or you got rust or stuff in the system. Shirley 17 says, I got a 2010 Toyota RAV4. My AC doesn't work. The fuses are checked. The relays are checked. It just won't work. A mechanic said when you put power to the compressor, it works. Sad but true, when that kind of stuff happens, it works with power to it. You know the compressor works, no fuses or anything are blown. All car systems today are operated by computers. And sad but true on that one, there is a part called the AC amplifier. It's a computer module. That's probably gone bad. Now, any good mechanic can go to that AC power amplifier. And if they see power is going to the amplifier when you turn the AC on, but no power comes out and goes to the AC compressor, you got a bad amplifier. Odds are that's what it is. I see them going out on those things uh, every once in a while. It's not too common, but they do break. It's all computer controlled. Now, old Scotty here is a cheapskate. So I got a video that shows how to do it. If you don't want to spend all that money on <laughs> my own cars, I've always done it in the past. I just run a wire from the positive battery to inside the car, put it on a toggle switch, put a 
20 amp fuse and then run that wire to the compressor when I want cold air I turn it on when I don't I turn it off you could do that if you wanted but if you want to keep it stocked you're probably going to need an AC amplifier just have a mechanic check to see is power going to it and no power is coming out you know the amplifier is bad so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell